Welcome to the Media Current Contrib Half Hour. It is the first day of September. Uh, I have to keep rem reminding myself it's not the first month of the quarter. <clears throat> it's the first, it's the last month of the quarter. So yeah. <clears throat> anyway, today we're going to have a look at some news issues and Q&A. If there's anything you'd like us to look at, please dig it up and pop it in the chat. Uh, otherwise, I'll dig up something from my giant chest of active issues. So, housekeeping. My name is Damien McKenna. <clears throat> Excuse me. Uh, community lead at Media Current. Um, I've been involved in Drupal since 2007, do a bunch of stuff, but people recognize me as that guy with the bunny ears who hops around the issue queues. My time is sponsored by Media Current. We're a full service digital agency that implements world-class open source software development strategy and design to achieve defined goals for enterprise organizations seeking return, a better return on investment. And we love working with Drupal. So these uh, meetings were set up as a community project. Go to drupal.org slash project slash contrib underscore half underscore hour to see the upcoming schedule and to get access to uh, recordings of past meetings. And if you leave a comment on today's meeting, you get issue credit just for hanging out. <clears throat> we adhere to the Drupal Code of Conduct. Go to drupal.org slash DCOC if you have not read it recently. So uh, the upcoming schedule for this month is, again, open. If there's something that you'd like us to take a look at, uh, please post a comment in our planning issue or on the week issues. If you'd like to give a presentation on something, let me know. If um, there's something you'd like us to dig into or topic or anything, just um, drop us a line and we'll get it on the schedule. So uh, no security updates this week. Um, no surprise security updates this week either, though it is Thursday. So I have to add the disclaimer of yet. Um, so um, anybody have any news they would like to share? So putting a bit of direction on it. How did uh, Decouple Dev Days go? Uh, Decouple Days went pretty good. Uh, we had a, a, a modest showing, about 75 people, I want to say. Um, some great information was shared uh, by a lot of people. Um, Gatsby was there doing some great presentations. Pantheon, uh, the uh, Steve from Pantheon did a great impromptu keynote uh, that encourage user participation that was spectacular and I wish we recorded it but you actually can't couldn't record it because it wouldn't have made sense to just do a screen share we should have videos up uh, eventually as always it depends on me so it's eventually um, but it was a good time awesome and Darren uh, share the news, please. Yes, uh, uh, the Tampa Bay Drupal user group is meeting tonight at seven o'clock in uh, in Clearwater at the at the um, what's it called the Feather Sound Panera Bread. Cool. They're, they have a nice conference room there. Nice and good coffee and good hot chocolate and. <laughs> I won't even mention the full meal uh, there. Yes. And dessert. dessert. Their bakery is rather good. But anyway, very cool. Uh, is that every month on the first Thursday or? Yes. Cool. Um, I need to dig one up in New Hampshire again. They've kind of languished in the past couple of years. Um, but cool. All right, so I wanted to share a funny story with you that um, I only just realized a few days ago. 
um, that, yes, people who have been contributing to open source projects for years can still make very face palm worthy mistakes. So this pertains to the diff integration for the meta tag module. Um, it has an open issue from a number of years ago and work started on it uh, in 2014 for Drupal 7. Somebody worked out the necessary hooks to use to make it work. And in August of 2017, we had a working patch and all was good. And then I committed it. <clears throat> I committed it in September, a month later after testing it and it getting rerolled and everything. And um, I committed it to the wrong branch. So uh, this was diff integration for the Drupal 7 module that I committed to the Drupal 8 branch of MetaTag. And it was only when I was doing a code review of the code base of the uh, 8.x-1.x branch as part of uh, efforts to clean it up a bit before uh, forking version two. Um, so only when I was doing that and reviewing all of the output from Matt Glamon's wonderful Drupal check package that I noted, hey, there are some functions in here that reference other functions that don't exist. And I tried to trace, I had first started tracing back where these uh, functions were coming from. Um, so it was two hook implementations because in the D7 version of diff, you used two different hooks to do the integration. And those were calling a, an internal function in meta tag to find out whether or not this current entity should have the diff output. The problem was that function didn't exist in Drupal 8. So then I thought, well, maybe the function was removed. And so I spent ages digging back through the commit history of meta tag for Drupal 8, all the way back to its first commits. And I could not find it. And so then I traced back to the, went back to the, the issue where the integration was added and read through it and thought, you know, th this looks fine. And then, then realized this was for the Drupal 7 branch. And sure enough, the commit message that shows up on the issue, if I, find it real quick, the commit message. So here's where I did the, we had a um, re-roll of patch, been working on uh, getting the patch re-rolled and updated. And then finally got to here and the patch failed to apply, but I had it, cleanly applied locally. So I figured, you know, there's some minor line difference, squabbling, didn't care. It was fine. And I committed it. What I never noticed was, see here where the patch is for, or runs against the 7.x-1.x .x branch. The commit message that it shows here uh, with the green bar, Damien McKenna committed uh, commit hash code on 
8.x dash 1.x. Um, and then I said, I ran the test locally and they all passed, committed, thanks all, and tagged it for inclusion in the 8.x dash 1.3 release. So I had forgotten from when I started working on this that this is for Drupal 7. And then I committed it to the Drupal 8 branch and tagged it for that release. Um, and so since then, I've thought, I've kind of thought in the back of my head, you know, I committed diff integration. I couldn't remember which version of meta tag it was for, but I knew I'd done something, but never looked into it. And so uh, five years, shy of one month, I realized, oh, this was committed to the wrong branch, which is why the functions that the patch uses, where's the patch? There's the patch. The, fun, the, the patch uses the function meta tag entity supports meta tags, except that function doesn't exist in Drupal, in the meta tag version for Drupal 8 and 9. Um, it only exists in the Drupal 7 module, which is why the code review for Drupal, not, uh, the 8 x branch was failing, saying this function doesn't exist. There's a problem here. So shout out to Matt Glamon for the wonderful Drupal check module. I need to go run it against more modules I maintain to see if I accidentally made a boo-boo there in other places too. So this is going to be included in the next release for um, meta tag for uh, Drupal 7. Did I include, I did the wrong one. Anyway, I need to work out, uh, I need to work out what the next release of meta tag for D7 will be and include this because face palm. So this will be in the next release for uh, D7. And I believe we have a separate issue somewhere else for Drupal 8. Um, yeah, so fun times. Um, with that, anybody have anything, any issues they would like to look at? Otherwise, I could just go and commit this. Well, we've got uh, an issue that has, it might be too complicated to uh, make much progress on in a half hour, but it's, uh, it has uh, been going on for a while and it's about uh, making it possible to symlink the Drupal core files into their, um, into their um, locations in a in, in a composer um, installation, so yeah. that when you when you're develop doing your development, they you know the 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 files automatically update, and you don't have to recopy them. You know, just, so, which uh, causes some problems because Drupal uses PHP's. Um, Double underscore dir double underscore um, constant to, and uh, that tries to find the actual, uh, the real path to the file that that you're in, and uh, so when you're looking for for the settings and you've uh, sim linked the Drupal files, then it uh, doesn't actually it, it tries to find the settings in your uh, in the uh, 
repository that you symlink from rather than the the place where Drupal is actually running. Right. So we have uh, had to, some people doing a lot of work on it, trying to make it um, get it uh, fixed so that this uh, development method can uh, work. And uh, apparently we got it to the point where it passes tests for Drupal 10, but not for Drupal 9. And uh, they don't, they, they haven't been able to figure out why yet. Intriguing. Um, yeah, th this is a common practice with a lot of other frameworks where the kind of like the you can do with the vendor code base, you can have the vendor code base not in your uh, main code base and have it somewhere else. Um, and it also helps uh, the ability to move the core directory out of the web directory. So I imagine this would open the doors to um, being able to do that as well. But that's kind of a, another issue. But very interesting. Um, Imagine this would come into play where you have, uh, say, one server running a lot of different code projects, uh, all running the same code base. Um, and you want to manage them as one. Am I right there? Well, this came up with, uh, with um, what's that project we, we use for uh, development? Um, it, my mind is Drupal blanking right now. Pod? Drupal Pod, yes. Hmm. So with Drupal Pod, uh, the idea was uh, to be able to to have to do your development uh, in the, in a clone of the Drupal repository and have it automatically um, automatically be able to see your changes in a in the live Drupal site. Okay. So a whole bunch of merge requests. Uh, merge requests, one thing I realize is when you're looking at a, at a patch file, it tells you what branch it was made against, whereas with the merge request, that's not clear uh, um, what branch it started from. Um, but let's take a look at the one fail just for SNGs. Composer lock hash. So, the composer lock files are being modified when one is expected to not be modified, right? I'm not sure. I haven't uh, tried running this myself. But that is a very interesting issue. Um, let's take a look at the patch file. So, well, let's see. So, would you which merge request would you recommend, or which, or is the patch up to date? And the last uh, comment says uh, the D10 merge request is passing tests. The D9 merge request is failing because it's not managing to write the Drupal locations class into the composer project root. I'm not sure which of those merge requests he's referring to. Maybe we need, maybe we could uh, hide some of these merge requests. I wonder if that's possible. Yeah. I suspect One it's that these two here at the top. I mean, numerically, 
it looks right that the top one is for Drupal 10 is the newest one. The bottom one okay. would then be the Drupal 9 one. Um, let's take a look at the changes. That's a long diff file. Um, so it's adding a new plugin called Core Drupal Locations. And no, locations namespace that it puts into composer plugin locations. Um, do, 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 do. Generates the Drupal location file, which defines the Drupal app root constant. So they're abstracting that part of the system so that this can be used instead of the dir thing. Um, oh, it should use the dir. Uh, locations it's possible at runtime, but is undesirable for performance. Therefore, during the composer install process, when we have access to this data, this plugin writes a PHP class file, which defines locations as class constants. Interesting. So, And there's the file where it creates the output, locations writer, and it saves the output. And read me. This is quite an elaborate approach to solving it, but let's see in practice. So what it's saying is instead of doing dir name, then dir underscore, underscore, dir underscore, underscore, you use this uh, kernel command to get the app root. Um, interesting. So it is, like you said, Interesting how it works on Drupal 9. Sorry, it works on Drupal 10, but doesn't work on Drupal 9. You wonder if there's maybe a minuscule difference in one of the dependencies that is causing something to not work as intended. Um, build successful. So they were last ran, last worked on um, a few weeks ago, but both at the, on the same day. Um, let's take a quick look at the test run output, console output. This is a long, uh, command history. Let's see. I wonder if that's, it's interesting. Um, it hit an error and failed teardown. Oh. 
wonder if that happened on the D10 run. <clears throat> Excuse me. So uncaught error, let's see. That does not output in the Drupal 10 test run. Uh, let's see, scroll back up to see where it failed. Test failures. Uncaught object that. So, Let's see, PHP warning class, test compatibility trait not found. So it is failing really early on. It's failing before that even. So it's failing, oh, skipping 14K of the output. So let's load the whole output because it's only showing a portion of it. Uh, because, oh wait, I misread. I'm going to close that because I was killing my browser. Let's try opening it again real quick. console output. That's 14 megabytes of text, 15 megabytes of text. Um, it's a lot. Uh, I wonder if I can, it'd be worth saving that, that out and digging through it. But that's a lot. Um, yeah, it, it's like something is happening where uh, it's not simply not working properly. Maybe the dependencies are not being downloaded properly. For it to say simply a PHP unit class is not available um, suggests something strange, failed. So I'm going to save that. I'm just not going to kill my Safari browser trying to load it. Um, but yeah, thanks for bringing that one up. Um, I will look into that myself after this, uh, but I think we need to leave it there for this week. Um, Thank you for joining us. We'll be back again next week. Uh, I might have more on this issue. It's certainly an intriguing one. Thanks for bringing it up, Darren. And hope you have a, a good time at the Tampa Bay group tonight. Um, until next week, take care and have a fantastic week. Thank you. Thank you, Damien.